You have two minutes. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. My name is Allison Riggs, and first I'd like to comment on what a farce introducing this bill at this late date that does this much damage, um, the, de the damage to democracy in this state from this is um, unacceptable. This bill is voter suppression at its very worst. You're making North Carolina a national laughingstock, and you should be ashamed. This bill is a naked attempt to predetermine election outcomes by keeping people from voting. This bill steals from North Carolinians opportunities to vote that you know um, are disproportionately used by voters of color and low-income voters. This bill as a whole can only be interpreted as one thing, a cynical ploy to make it harder for certain people to vote. Those are poor people, people of color, elderly people, and young people. This bill disrespects and violates state and federal constitutional and statutory protections of the, for the franchise. North Carolinians won't stand for this. This bill erases the years of progress we've made in improving election administration, making more friendly the election experience for voters, and encouraging ci civic participation. North Carolinians won't stand for this. Voters love same-day registration. They love early voting. This bill encourages bullying at the ballot box. You're creating a, a situation in which polling places will now be a free-for-all, and the voters who are least likely to be able to withstand that bullying are going to be subject to it even more. This bill does not revise and reform 30 years of election law. Many of these reforms were enacted since 2000. What it does is it takes away the opportunities that you've granted to North Carolina Carolinians in the past that have been beneficial. It takes those away and it disrespects the right to vote. Of particular concern is the provision in, this, in the new version that does not allow college IDs to be used from public universities in voting under the voter ID portion of this bill. Um, we think that's a, a, a bad move because those are public, public IDs is, issued by public institutions. Um, second thing we were really concerned about is the shortening of early voting. Um, as we've heard, it two, over 2.5 million voters used it last year. That's about 56% of voters. It's, it's a wildly popular program, uh, cross party lines. It's, it's, not a, it's not a partisan issue. So uh, we're concerned about that and, and the impact it might have on longer lines on Election Day, uh, confusion at the polls, and all that stuff. Um, second, or we're also concerned about the elimination of same-day registration. Again, another, another tool that can be used to in improve civic participation among citizens. Um, ending pre-registration, another thing we're, we're, we're intrigued about. Um, that's designed just to get 16, 17-year-old kids interested in civics and interested in politics and government and engaged in the process at a, at a young age. Um, I think that's a great thing, and I think all, all children and all students in, in the state should be taught civics and, and engaged from as early as possible. According to the Declaration of Independence, the idea of America is that legitimate governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. That consent is gained through the process of voting, and voting has become a sacred American right. It says government is accountable to the people. ID requirements say people are accountable to the government. Voter ID says each of us must have the consent of government in order to participate in America's greatest ritual. And unless you are going to make all driver's licenses available for free, we have to pay for it to boot. This requirement changes the very nature of the American compact. It replaces voters in charge of government and puts government in charge of voters. It allows for a future when one group in power can limit voters to those who will keep that group in power. No good American wants to see that. And that being said, this bill as presented is not about voter protection, but voter prevention. Voter ID diminishes our sacred American pact. Voter ID diminishes our democracy. It is un-American. It is wrong. This bill is bad for North Carolina. Thank you. I've done a lot of work to help get people out to vote, and yet I know that this voter ID bill would present yet another obstacle that is, just isn't necessary for people to deal with. Not just students, but anyone. There just are not cases of, of in-person voter fraud to be reported. The, the problem with this bill is that it's a solution in search of a problem. Even if it does head off any potential in-person voter fraud, the damage that it does in terms of preventing people from voting is just so much greater that it's a solution that creates more problems. 
Jordan, thank you for coming. I don't see fraud, you know, assuming that we're not all hopping in a DeLorean and traveling 90 years back to Chicago. I don't see that also as being an issue. But the real issue is, is voter apathy. You know, uh, Senator Stein mentioned that we're up to 70% of people voting during the, uh, if I could get your attention, please. Thank you. Uh, in the last uh, four, uh, two presidential elections, we've been lucky enough, yeah, over here, um, we've been lucky enough to have 70% uh, of the people voting, but statistically in the last two decades, it's been around 50%. So I urge you guys, instead of asking what can we do to make people less people voting, we should be asking ourselves the opposite, right? You know, especially for youth, this is a big, you know, big issue, making it very hard for um, people in urban areas to vote. Finally, let me leave you with this, is that over the last few years, I've had the, you know, the pleasure of telling my students that this is a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And if this bill passes, I'm gonna have a little bit harder time looking my students in the eye and telling them that same thing. Thank you for coming. I was raised to a life of civic participation by my elderly mother, who was a leader in the League of Women Voters and other organizations. And it became a hobby of mine to register voters as soon as I was an adult. Over the course of my adult life, I've registered hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of voters. And those were voters who registered as Democrats, Republicans, and independents. I'm extremely proud of this, and it continues to be one of my favorite things to do. Um, uh, this bill harms our democracy because it's going to restrict participation in North Carolina elections. It purports to solve a problem of voter fraud that by every scientific measure does not exist. It will reduce participation in our elections by elderly people, college students, disabled veterans, and the working poor. We've heard this already, but I personally know people in each of these categories. We've heard the statistics, we've also heard anecdotes. Every election season, I walk my precinct, knock on doors, and register voters, uh, wait in front of the grocery store. I am not being a partisan person. I am being a participant in our democracy. Early voting has been a great boon to our state by allowing people with limited transportation and long working hours to cast their votes. In my precinct, this is a very big deal. It means a lot of people who couldn't vote otherwise get a chance to vote. Um, many elderly and disabled people I encounter lack current state identifications and the wherewithal to get them, even though they've been voting for years. In the 2011 November elections, I helped a disabled veteran in my precinct register and vote on the same day. He had no transportation, he could barely walk, he had not had the opportunity before I knocked on his door. He would not have been able to vote if this law was in place. So, um, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I believe your time has expired. Okay. I would like to remind you regarding voter ID that v the voter ID law in Pennsylvania was successfully challenged and postponed um, when the judge found that he could not allow the law to go through if even one voter was disenfranchised by the law. And so what I'm simply going to suggest to you is that contrary to what you seem to think, you people who, and I am one of you, who take planes so easily, who have passports, who travel, who have um, driver's licenses, there are many, many, many voters who have exactly the same right to vote in this state but who would be disenfranchised or who would have to pay money to travel to be able, some kind of money, some kind of hiring, help, getting help from friends, something that would be, in essence, a poll tax in order to procure this voter ID, particularly the odd requirement that a student photo ID would not be included as a valid form of ID. The uh, pre-registration that you're going to eliminate, that actually helps Republican voters, uh, new young Republican voters. 30% of the young people coming in are Republicans, 30% are Democrats. I'm just sad that you're, you all feel obliged to jam this kind of thing through. Um, people that have tried to defend voting rights and expand voting participation in this country have withstood water hoses and 
uh, been beaten and uh, gone uh, through lots. And you're building your legacy here today um, as you put these measures forward. I want to point out, as every single person before me has, that these changes to voting laws are impacting specific groups of people. The fewer young people and minorities who vote, the better, it seems, in your minds. We get it. No one is being fooled. Shouldn't a democracy ensure elections are free, fair, and accessible to make sure every citizen has a say? Of registered North Carolina voters who lack ID, nearly 25% are seniors over the age of 65, even though they make up only 13% of the state's population. Seniors are also hard hit by provisions making it more difficult to add satellite voting sites to accommodate seniors and voters with disabilities. The youth. In a sad move to restrict youth participation in our democracy, this bill specifically bans college student IDs from being used for voting, eliminates pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds, and eliminates the requirement for high school voter registration drives. We should be encouraging the civic participation of young people, not blocking it. And finally, the most blatant and harmful impact of these changes are in voters of color. 31% of registered North Carolinian voters who don't have photo ID are African American. Despite comprising just 22% of the state's population, the bill also bans out pre uh, African Americans despite comprising just 22% of the state's population. This bill also bans out precinct provisional ballots, striking the votes of people who move, make it, making it much easier to challenge voters' eligibility and create an intimidating presence at the polls. All we ask is for your conscience and goodwill to overcome your political interests. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last we have, is it Joshua Vincent? Please welcome. I want to ask um, everyone who opposes this bill to please stand with me in solidarity as I address the committee. As a state coordinator for civic engagement for multiple 501c3 and partisan turnout campaigns, I say demonstratively that we do not need this bill. How dare we discourage our youth from exercising our right as citizens to contribute to the electoral process by restricting their ability to register and vote early. Further, there's no evidence of an issue of fraudulent voting in the state with signature attestation attached to, to our in-person voting process. There's no need to confuse the citizens of this great state by adding loopholes and prohibitive costs to our constitutionally guaranteed right to free and fair education. Senators, some of you appear to be drunk with power. Why are you so scared of the people? Why are you so scared of people voting? Maybe you've seen that less than 20% of North Carolina supports your extremist agenda. Maybe you've seen that the people of North Carolina overwhelmingly support the Moral Monday demonstrators who by the hundreds are engaging in civil disobedience, people who you have called outsiders, who you sit here and attempt to disenfranchise in front of our eyes and our ears. You know that your extreme right wing agenda won't last long. You know that the people behind me, the true moral majority, the black, white, Asian, Latino, of all races, old and young, from all socioeconomic and religious backgrounds will not stand for this type of race-based, fear-mongering, fundamentalist, fundamentalist longing for the days when black and brown people were in bondage and women were still uneducated and in the kitchen. The people here have spoken and they are with the demonstrators in the streets and not with the regressive and deceitful legislation <coughs> practices taking place here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoever claps, you can remove from the room now. Okay. From the committee, Senator Nesbitt. Mr. Chair, if I